Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the entire process of me working on this portrait using alcohol markers, colored pencil, and fine liners. Thank you so much to Ohuhu for sponsoring today's video. Today, starting June 6, Ohuhu is running a character design contest and giving out three prizes and a bonus gift for your Ohuhu creation. Also, because it is their sixth anniversary from June 14th through the 20th, all of their markers will be up to 20% off. This birthday sale only happens annually and you might not see these discounts on Black Friday or Cyber Monday, so this is definitely the best time to get some. I'll have all the links in the description if you're interested. For the beginning of this piece, I did my sketch in my iPad here. And so in today's video, I am drawing a character who is from an anime slash manga. And I would describe my personal art style right now to be somewhere in between realism and cartoon. And of course, I am very much inspired by anime and manga, but I like to add a little bit more detail. I kind of flesh out the features a little bit more so that it feels a little bit more realistic, but it's still very much stylized. And so this is something that I've sort of adopted over the years. And what I do in my sketchbooks is practice from drawing portraits from photos and real people. And then I take that knowledge and that practice and I'm able to utilize that information and kind of muscle memory when I go to interpret a character like this who is not realistic at all. And the thing about trying to get fan art that is a little bit different from the original art style of where the character comes from is really paying attention to the character design and what makes this character that character. And so with Itadori, it's definitely his hair. And I was very mindful of making sure that I kept the silhouette very similar to ensure that the character stays recognizable. After I finish and finalize the sketch, I go ahead and print it out onto printer copy paper, typical just copy paper here. And then from there, I can transfer the sketch onto the drawing paper that I'm going to use. So for today's video, I'm going to be putting this illustration in my Ohuhu marker sketchbook. And to transfer the sketch onto the paper, I use a light pad. Previous to getting an iPad, I used to have a glass table and I would actually just put a lamp underneath the glass table to do what I'm about to do, the transferring onto the paper. But um, yeah, I know some people will also do it on their window during the day, but yeah. I highly recommend a light pad. They come in a lot more affordable options these days from what I can tell. So I definitely recommend it if you are someone like me who likes to do this kind of process. Also, I guess before we actually get started, I want to mention, so I've drawn Itadori before, and this was my first iteration of him, which I'm not entirely mad at, but I wasn't quite as happy with this as I was with the other characters. So for those of you who haven't seen them before, I did the other kind of main Jujutsu Kaisen characters. I have Nobra here, Megumi and Gojo. And basically for those of you who have been following me for a little bit, I've really fallen down like the K-pop rabbit hole. And so that was the vibe and aesthetic I was going for with these illustrations was putting these characters into a K-pop idol, or I guess maybe in this case, a J-pop aesthetic, which is why they are not in their attire from the series. And yeah, I was just not quite as satisfied with Yuji Itadori and you know, he's the main character. So I don't normally do this, but i really felt compelled since it's kind of a set to revisit and kind of redo it. So it's a very similar pose. It's a similar vibe, but I think hopefully when we finish this, it will be up to my liking. So let's find out together, shall we? So let's get into a new page. So what we're gonna do is put this piece of paper underneath the first page here. And since it's in a sketchbook, we have to fold that back. 
and turn that on. And what I like to do is I'll use some masking tape to tape it down so that it not, doesn't move around. But this way, if you accidentally move it around, then you don't have to worry about realigning it. And as I've mentioned many times before, I really like using a coal erase color pencil by Prismacolor. Basically, it is a color pencil, but is actually erasable. Okay, and then from here, so I am going to use a colored pencil, but the this time not an erasable one and in a darker shade so that it can stand out when we start adding in the markers. And again, I like using colors so that it blends nicely with the medium. Okay, and then so as you would have seen in the other portraits here, I've been doing this style where I have two different kind of very strong colored light sources coming from each side. And so I'm going to do that again. And the way that I like to approach these is I will often very, very lightly map out the shapes with the erasable color pencil. That way I have a little bit of a plan when I start going in with the markers. And as you'll see in a moment, the thing about using markers is you really have to work very quickly and decisively when you're filling in areas to avoid as much patchiness as possible. And the way that I map out these shapes is quite stylized, of course, and not you not often make entire sense. <laughs> a lot of it is just feels a little bit arbitrary. And honestly, if you're happy with the way that you did something previously and you want to recreate it, don't be afraid to just go back and look at what you did. Cause honestly, half the time I forget what I did. So what I'm doing here is actually referencing this previous illustration that I did and kind of looking at the way that I did the shapes. Cause this is a portrait that's head on, which I didn't do with Yuji before. So I'm just trying to remember how I approached the shapes here from the kind of head on perspective in the in this version i did the highlighting on the nose a little bit differently than i kind of mapped out here but you know what we're gonna we're gonna experiment and see what this looks like so yeah i'm happy with that so we can go ahead and get rid of our safety net if you will it also helps if you really want to compare side by side because sometimes the sketch just has more life than the cleaned up version. So looking at it here, I do think I wanna go in and thicken up the eye here. And we're gonna emphasize the smile, just something that I lost a little bit there. Yeah, you can already tell that the sketch and this version is already looking a little bit different now but that can't be helped unfortunately that's just how it goes sometimes okay and then from here of course we are now going to start coloring so we are going to be using the ohuhu markers which i absolutely love and have been using for a number of years now and i have this amazing cheat sheet swatch page that i made for myself to help give me a better idea of what colors I'm working with. So the swatch sheet that you see here is this set and their pastel set. The pastels being on the bottom here. So I always start out with the skin when I work on a portrait. So we're going to pick the base skin tone and then we're going to choose the two strong lights that are coming from each side. So. For the most part, I pick a cool color and a warm color for those two light sources. So let's go with his base skin tone first. Yuji is like a light peachy color. So I think we're gonna go with maybe this R19. And then for the two 
light source colors. What did I use in the previous one? I had used yellow and blue. Yeah, his hair is pink, so we don't want the highlight color to be a pink or anything too close to a pink. I like this teal, I think more than this blue. So I think I'm gonna do that. So I might try to do this combo. Was this YR110? It's very important to swatch all of your colors again, just to be absolutely sure that it's what you want. Yeah, I was worried that the pink and this highlight would be too close, but I think they're gonna be okay. All right, so now we finally go in with some color. So I'm gonna start with this mellow peach. And because I've already sketched in these shapes, it allows me to kind of turn off my brain for a moment in the sense of figuring out where I'm gonna go with the color. And I, when I'm filling in a shape, I typically like to outline the inside of the shape first and then fill it in. So something that I did with this portrait is I actually did have a, a another color where I used for kind of the darker shadows. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that again with this portrait which I will have to select a color for that as well in a second. But for now, we're just gonna keep going on with the highlight color here. And I think the areas where I'm planning to do shadows, I'm actually going to lay over top. So I'm actually gonna use the base on everything except for the highlights and where I want the blue. And then the shadow areas, I will go on top of this base color. I've gone back and forth of whether I like to do like circular motions or just one direction. And I think I prefer when I'm filling in these areas to go in one direction and make sure that you're kind of overlapping all your strokes to try and get as even as you can. It's not perfect as you can see, but it's not a big deal because I usually end up layering and I also use color pencils as well. So contrary to what I just said, now I'm kind of doing lots of short strokes. I think mainly because there's so many intricate shapes going on in here. So, but again, the key is to go over top everything more than once. And when it comes to highlights, especially on the nose, I kind of go back and forth of whether I try to go around it or if I just add it in later with like a paint marker or a gel pen. But I think for today, we can actually go around it like that. I admit it does look a little strange, especially when you add in the blue, but I promise that it usually comes together somehow, <laughs> in my opinion anyway. The thing that I think, if I'm remembering correctly with the hair, I totally freeformed it. This is definitely leap of faith, trust the process kind of moment because as I've mentioned many times, I believe anime hair is strange. And then the same with the blue. This is when the brush tip really comes in handy because you can change the shape of the stroke with the pressure you use. So pressing hard and then kind of lifting up your hand to make a flicking motion creates this like tapered effect. Oh, we can actually fill in the hair with the base color. And basically, we're just gonna go carefully around the strokes that we just did with the other two colors. Now, something that is really handy to do is if you're unsure about how colors are going to layer, is you can do a test run. So I'm gonna see what 
it looks like if I use the pink on top of the base skin tone, looks like it's just darker really. I'm gonna see maybe what it looks like if I were to introduce maybe a purple instead, just out of curiosity. Yes, I think I'm gonna do that because the pink, I just realized it will, won't really create much contrast when we create the shadow underneath the hairline if it's the same color, so. And the nice thing about this particular purple is it leans quite pink, so it still feels cohesive with the hair. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, so now back to what I just said about the hairline and the hair. Definitely uh, is really similar in color, but I might be able to, I mean, I'm definitely going to darken it with colored pencils later anyway, but I might go ahead and do a, another pass with maybe the pink. Okay, yeah, as I mentioned, I wanna try putting the pink on top of the purple. Yeah, basically just creates like a deeper shade. So let's go ahead and try that. And this is the nice thing about alcohol markers is that they are transparent. So they layer really nicely on top of one another to create lots of different shades and colors. Okay, now I want to give him some lip color here. Let's go with just the shade slightly darker, R20 here. looking too bad. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the close. And something when you can is to break up larger areas into shapes. So even though the lapel of the kind of suit jacket here is gonna be the same color as the, the body part, I guess, uh, the shoulder here, I broke it up into separate shapes just to make it easier to fill in. The tie, it's meant to be like a tie that's been undone. I was debating on whether or not I wanted it to be red or the same color as the suit jacket. And I think just for the sake of consistency with the other characters, I am going to just leave it this, or make it match with the suit jacket. Red, I was thinking red because the character in the series, he has like a red hood on his uniform, which is kind of unique to him. But I think when I make the background red, that will still, that'll be a nod enough, I think, to his, to that part of his character design. Okay, and then, so speaking of that background, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add it in as well because it'll help me get an idea of how far I wanna push the other colors and the values when the background is in. still kind of deciding if I like the red. I think I do. <laughs> In any case, we are now going to just kind of deepen some of the marker areas here with basically just kind of going over top some of the spots with either the same shade or another shade, just layering them up to get deeper values here. 
going in with this very vibrant coral is perhaps a choice that doesn't entirely make sense but you know what i kind of like it because it is sort of marrying the background to what's going on with the portrait now and i think this will this won't look nearly as strong when we get the colored pencils on top and hopefully it all comes together <laughs> i might even actually add in oops might even add in some of this purple that we used on the skin earlier to the shirt just you know that's kind of my thing with creating some kind of color harmony is trying to introduce the colors throughout the piece to kind of draw the eye around. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right. And I am also going to go ahead and actually use this, the base color. So the original base color that we did for the skin and just very lightly do some shading here to give some dimension to the other areas of his face here, mostly around the eyes because that's definitely where you want the eye to be drawn to. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So from here, we are now going to introduce the colored pencils. And I usually, again, start out with the skin. That's where I do most of the rendering. And I usually start out with kind of just warming up certain areas. And with colored pencils, I like to go in with a really light hand. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the nose. So if you remember in this one, I did it like this, the highlights, and this one I kind of created this shape that extends out, creating a different kind of plane here, but I'm not sure how I feel about it. I find it usually works when it's on one side, but I'm not sure about how it goes with both. So I'm going to very lightly I think I do prefer that. I really like using purple in my shadows. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, which might seem counterproductive since I've been layering back and forth between purples and pinks on these shadow areas, but I find having the two creates a really interesting color story. And also I'm very indecisive. Something that I've been really into lately is these neon colored pencils. So I'm definitely going to introduce that into the mix. The unfortunate thing about these neon colors, and it's the case too with even the markers, is that they are really difficult to reproduce. So when you scan them and try to make copies or prints of them, it never looks quite as vibrant, but that will not stop me because I just think it looks so cool anyways. So to get back to the hair here, kind of similar to the way that we approached the highlighting parts with the markers, I kind of do a similar thing, but with the color pencils by just making more of these wispy triangular shapes to give the hair some depth. And I'm really glad that I decided to go with this orange peachy color as opposed to the yellow that I used previously. I think that it looks quite nice with this pink hair. And I find this approach to the typical kind of shown in spiky hair really allows me to keep the silhouette in the general look of the original character design 
but also give it a lot more detail and texture without really having to pay too much attention to how it's all happening. <laughs> And the jacket is looking a little bit flat, so I'm gonna go in with a lighter color pencil on top of it. And this is a way to lighten certain areas up, which I know I mentioned earlier that it's harder to go light, lighter after you've laid down something dark with markers, but you can lift the areas a little bit with colored pencils. Not too, too much, but a little bit. And it creates a really nice kind of overlay of colors as well. Okay, now, so I'm definitely not done with the colored pencils, but I think what we're gonna do next is actually start the line art. And the reason why I want to start introducing the line art, even though I don't think I'm done with the color pencil is for a number of reasons. One of them being that the color pencil will cover up some of the line art. So that's why I start with color pencil a little bit first and then the fine liners after. But the thing about adding in some line art now is it helps me get a sense of how dark I need to go with the value, the other values with the color pencil. So we'll kind of go back and forth probably with the fine liners and color pencils from this point. And I'm using like a really dark red, like a burgundy. I like using colored line art in most areas because I just find it really helps add to the very colorful vibe that I often go for in my illustrations. And I just go in and do all of the line art and it all has this uniform width. And then sometimes I will add variation after the fact. You can see I can try, I try to work from left to right basically because I'm right-handed and this helps me avoid smudging the line art if I can. Sometimes it still happens, but it helps. is the the line art is in from here I think I'm gonna go ahead and add in much more darker tones with the colored pencil like his hair for example and I'm even actually using this like really dark kind of mauvey color as opposed to a, a brown because I want it to kind of meld in with the very vibrant colors that I have going on in the rest of the piece So now that a lot of the kind of darker color pencil is in, I'm going in with a black brush pen now and adding it to the really key features, AKA the eyes. And something that I've been doing recently, which I got the idea from mostly manwas is creating this 
colored highlight on the lash line. It just looks really fun and creates this like glossy look, which is pretty fun and glamorous looking. And I'm also trying out this thing where I don't use a dark line around the actual iris, but rather like a diffused kind of cool look, almost like contacts. It's interesting just to play around with different little things. And then I'm adding just accents with the black on the other features. And then next I'm going to use this burgundy color again and go over some spots and create like variation in the line art a little bit just to give it more dimension in the width. And I usually try to focus on the areas that are a little bit darker or in shadow. Okay, something to note about that brush marker is it takes a while to dry and I stuck my hand in it and unfortunately smudged it a little bit here. So be careful, learn from me. I always do that. I'm gonna try and lift it from, nope. And lastly, we're going to use my favorite white paint marker to add in just the tiniest little touches of extra highlights in around the eyes because I'm extra like that. And sometimes I like to go around the lips as well, just a little bit. Actually, and last, last, last thing is I'm going to put in some lower lash lashes, but with a color pencil instead of the fine liner because I want the lower lashes to be a little bit softer. All right, and here is the final result. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you maybe learned something. Let me know if you like this type of format where I'm kind of narrating live while I'm working on this. And for those of you who are Jujutsu Kaisen fans, let me know who your favorite character is in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.